menstrual cycle and estrus cycle no organism survives forever hence if a species needs to continue to exist its members must reproduce their own kind fertilization is more a chain of events than a single isolated phenomenon and an interruption of any step in the chain can cause fertilization failure rhythmic series of changes in sex organs that occur about every 28 days throughout the reproductive life of a female from puberty to menopause is called menstrual cycle the most prominent feature of the cycle is a monthly flow of blood from the uterus lasting for 3 to 5 days this phase is known as menstruation menses or menstrual period each time the ovum starts maturing the secondary sex organs commence some growth changes to prepare for the reception of the expected fertilized ovum and the continuation of the anticipated pregnancy ovulation occurs about midway in the menstrual period 13th to 17th day If the ovum is fertilized in this period the proliferated mucosa is converted into placenta if not the hypertrophied mucosa breaks down then the ovary prepares for the maturation and ovulation of the next ovum cycle continues menstruation thus is the cyclic discharge of blood carrying broken tissue materials through the vagina the menstrual blood contains stripped of endometrium mucus leukocytes and unfertilized ovum a menstrual cycle is taken to begin with the onset of menstrual bleeding and ends just before the next menstruation during the menstrual cycle major changes occur in the uterus vagina breast and other organs also there is maturation of follicle in the ovary or ovarian cycle the changes during a menstrual cycle can be divided into three phases proliferative phase secretory phase and bleeding phase after menstruation the proliferative phase starts with a growth and proliferation of tissues on the walls of the uterus fallopian tubes and vagina since this phase involves a growing follicle in the ovary it is also known as follicular phase the phase extends for 10 to 12 days by the end of which the ovum is ejected ovulation from the follicle of the ovary it involves changes in the uterus and the ovary at the onset of proliferative phase the mucous membrane of the uterus called the endometrium is the thinnest the uterine changes then begin due to rising concentration of estrogen gradually endometrium glands grow in length its epithelial cells proliferate the endometrial stroma and blood vessels grow just before ovulation the endometrium becomes 3 to 5 mm thick the myometrial contractions become more powerful and secretion of uterine cervix glands becomes very thin during ovulation to facilitate the entry of spermatozoa during the proliferative phase an immature follicle ripens into a graafian follicle then comes the secretory phase extending for the next 12 to 14 days here the ruptured follicle changes into a corpus luteum in the ovary and begins to secrete progesterone hormone which causes changes in the secondary sex organs to further prepare for the anticipated pregnancy This phase is also known as progesteronal phase or luteal phase. 
In this phase, the changes in uterus involve further thickening of endometrium. Uterine glands are filled with secretion. Its movements are reduced to keep the uterus non-contracting. The arteries of the endometrium become coiled and its glycogen content increases. Towards the end of this phase, the endometrium is thick, soft and rich with blood. Next is the bleeding phase which starts if pregnancy fails to occur. Here the spiral arteries of the endometrium undergo spasm. Hence, portions of endometrium are sloughed off and this is accompanied by menstrual bleeding. At the end of menstruation, the endometrium that remains is only 0.5 to 1 mm thick. The bleeding phase usually extends for 3 to 5 days and is followed by the next menstrual cycle. Apart from estrogen and progesterone, the other hormones that regulate a woman's menstrual cycle are gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH, follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and luteinizing hormone or LH. GnRH, synthesized in hypothalamus, controls the release of both FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary gland where they are produced. FSH causes the ovarian follicle and its egg to mature, and the maturing follicle synthesizes and releases estrogens. The estrogen released produces cell division in the endometrium to repair damage caused by menstruation. The thickness of the tissue increases. The LH secretion causes ovulation when the mature egg breaks out of the follicle and moves into the fallopian tube. After ovulation, the anterior pituitary gland stops producing FSH but continues to release LH and converts the ruptured follicle into a corpus luteum. The estrogens and progesterone prepare reproductive organs for pregnancy and stimulate endometrium to become soft, moist and thick. Progesterone increases the volume of muscles and blood vessels in the walls of the uterus stimulates activity of mucous glands in endometrium and causes milk glands to develop in breast. In absence of pregnancy, corpus luteum degenerates and estrogen and progesterone levels decline. Menstruation occurs, making the end of one menstrual cycle and the beginning of another. If pregnancy occurs, the membrane around the implanted embryo secretes a hormone. Chorionic gonadotropin or HCG on the sixth day after ovulation, that is, 20th day of cycle. It suppresses menstruation and makes corpus luteum the functioning gland. Its hormones keep the endometrium soft, moist, thick and engorged with blood for pregnancy. The estrogen and progesterone also inhibit FSH, so no new follicles and eggs mature during pregnancy. While the appearance of the first menstrual flow in a woman's life between 11 to 13 years of age is called menarche, the permanent disappearance of menstrual cycles in the life of a woman is called menopause, which occurs normally between 45 and a little over 50 years of age. At menopause, the primordial follicles of the ovary no longer respond to pituitary gonadotropin. Puffian follicles don't develop, ovulation does not occur, and the possibility of pregnancy after a coitus ceases.
During menopause, ovarian failure results in low estrogens and hence raised levels of FSH and LH. The fall in estradiol production leads to atrophy of breast and vaginal mucosae. Other effects include decline in bone mass, hot flushes in skin, dizziness, fatigue, headaches, chest and neck pains, and insomnia. In case of non-primates, the seldom period during which the female receives the male is called its breeding season. Its sexual activities occur cyclically, outside which the females do not have any sexual activity. Such a cycle is called an Easter cycle. The period between the two breeding seasons is known as a nephus. Some species might have one Easter cycle in one season, while others might have several Easter cycles in one season. Their females accept the male partners only during the Easter. A single Easter cycle can be divided into four phases. During prostrus, there is swelling and an increase in the vascularity of the vulva and vagina. The uterus become enlarged and its glands hypertrophy. The female organs become suitable for reception of spermatozoa and fertilization of the ovum. The graphene follicles in the ovary undergo maturation. Estrus is the period of heat, that is, the female receives the male and ovulation takes place. During metestrus, the uterine hypertrophies and its glands have increased secretory activity and corpus luteum develops. In absence of pregnancy, the corpus luteum degenerates and the changes of the generative organs subside. Anestrus, from the sexual point of view, is the resting period. In monestrous animals, it lasts up to the next mating season, whereas in polyesterous animals, the resting interval is short, only up to the next cycle. Similar to menstrual cycle, changes in the first half of the estrus cycle are controlled by estrogens and later by progesterone. However, animals in heat experience a brief strong sexual urge in the middle of estrus cycle and are not sexually receptive at any other time while receptivity occurs throughout the menstrual cycle. Physically, estrus prepares the female reproductive tract for copulation whereas menstruation prepares the endometrium for implantation of a fertilized egg. If there is no fertilization, any preparatory thickening of uterine wall in estrus animals is merely reabsorbed, while in menstruating animals, the hypertrophic lining sloughs off as menstrual flow.